Hello and welcome back to The Market Lens. We're back from a short hiatus and somehow the summer is now winding to a close. I'm Sam Razi, Manager of Due Diligence, and I'm joined by Cliff Walsh, AP's CIO. We've made it to double digits as today is the 10th episode. If you've missed any of our prior episodes, please check them out in the Studio 454 video library or on YouTube. Today's news or noise segment is going to be something that we've never discussed before on the market lens, bank credit. Commercial and industrial lending was down 8% year over year in the first half of 2021. How can we experience numbers like this and still be in an economic recovery and expansion? Do you think this is news or noise? I think it's inconclusive on its own because it is tough to compare business lending levels now to a period when the economy was closed and businesses needed support, just as I've said in the past about inflation. How do you compare airline prices now to when no one was traveling? So on its own, CNI lending might not tell us much, but there are a few related things we can look at. What should we look at here? The economic growth we've seen was not spurred by corporate expansion, as in buying new equipment or expanding production. It's been fueled by the return to normalcy, plus the combination of pent up demand and a skyrocketing personal savings rate, as consumers had very little they could spend on when the economy was shut down. Personal savings rates have returned pretty close to normal, so that reopening kicker or pent up demand spend is likely done, and I think that's newsworthy. Not to mention a lot of extra savings have been flowing into the financial markets. With that drying up, I wouldn't own a meme stock right now. You mentioned bank lending, and I said the comparisons were faulty. However, if we look at bank balance sheets, I think it's a more newsworthy and eye-opening indicator. Banks are clearly de-risking. The fastest growing balance sheet items in the banking sector are treasuries, up 23% year over year, pretty close to an all-time high, and straight up cash, up 42% year over year. I think that conservatism doesn't bode well for bank lending going forward. I think the newsworthy thing to glean here is that the business expansion is in, unlikely to take the baton anytime soon, even though personal savings and consumer spending is slowing. Yeah, I, I agree. I think retail investors should be much more cautious when you see extremely large institutions like banks reining in their balance sheets. But let's switch gears and zoom into the market lens. We've seen various all-time highs in equity markets during July, and the S&P 500 keeps chugging along here. It's posted six straight months of positive performance, and that's the best streak since mid-2018. Fixed income, on the other hand, has seen long-duration treasury rates plummet, and it seems to be tough to get a read on where investors think this market is heading. Do you think we'll continue to see the risk-on trade or the start of a risk-off trade here? While there are often conflicting views between the stock and bond markets, I tend to trust the bond market more, but investors' goals in these areas aren't perfectly aligned, so some divergence is going to happen naturally around inflation and short-term interest rates. That being said, I think both markets are in sync, despite what it looks like on the surface. How so? What should investors be looking at here? When you look under the hood of the equity market, I think it's pricing in the same slowing growth, lower inflation environment that the bond market is pricing in. Sector leadership has changed in the equity market. Market breadth is narrowing. The percentage of stocks trading above their 50-day moving averages is less than 40%. This number was greater than 85% in March and 70% in June. Not to mention only four of the 11 S&P sectors are at fresh highs, and they're all defensive. Communication services, consumer staples, healthcare, and technology. Uh, cyclically sensitive sectors are lagging. Value stocks in general, energy, financials, transports, small caps and emerging markets are all struggling. The equity markets are shifting to risk off. Growth has regained leadership because investors place a premium on the space when economic growth becomes more scarce. We're starting to see a significant number of companies failing to give earnings guidance and a whole host of sell side firms reducing expectations. Goldman Sachs recently cut its second half GDP number to a one and a half to two percent, uh, a very weak outlook compared to historical growth. Okay, so what's your outlook for the remainder of the year here? I still believe there's relative value in long-dated treasuries and capital appreciation potential as economic growth slows and inflation returns to normal as the shutdown supply shocks work themselves out. I think we could break below 1% on the 10-year. As for equities, I'd be surprised if this sector rejiggering occurs without downside pressure on the indices as a whole, but stranger things have happened, most of them in the past 18 months. Domestic equities are seeing some outflows, but nothing severe. I think we'll probably see outflows accelerate as the slowdown becomes more clear, and then you'll see the broader indices pull back. The Fed is likely to remain accommodative, especially if inflation eases, so it's probably going to be by the dip, but it could be a bigger dip than we've seen recently. Thanks, Cliff. This market continues to surprise, and it's going to be interesting to see if there's a dip in the near future to add back into the equity markets. So this does it for today's Market Lens, and I hope it's letting everyone see 2020. 
We hope everyone enjoys the beautiful weather out there and we look forward to chatting with everyone soon. Thank you.